Hey, it's Ross from RossLookman.com. Today is part three of my series on the Seamarine Pico battery monitoring system. And if you're wondering how I got this crazy setup here, this is from part one and part two of the series. So in part one, we just set up the Pico as a regular battery monitor. We added a main shunt and plugged that in, set it up. We also looked at all the modules that are available with the Seamarine Pico and uh, how you can expand the system to measure quite a few different things. And then in part two, we added this quadro shunt and we added charges and loads over there on the left and ran those through the quadro shunt to see that power coming and going into and out of our system. We, able to, we were able to get a data readout here on the Pico. So definitely check out part one and two if you haven't yet. Now in part three, we're gonna be setting up an alarm on the Pico. We're gonna be setting off an alarm relay here on the quadro shunt. So you can set off audible alarms that show up on the screen and the Pico will beep at you, but you can also set off alarm relays when that alarm condition happens if you wanna turn something on like a little puck light like we're gonna to do today. Now the alarms are very versatile on Pico. You can set off an alarm for a low condition or a high condition such as when your battery state of charge gets too low or gets too high, uh, you can set off that alarm and associate a relay to go off and start your vehicle's engine or anything like that. So it's very versatile. Today we're just gonna be setting up one alarm. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the Pico. You can also do it in the Seamarine app and uh, whether you prefer the app or setting it up here, you can do it either way. Very versatile on the setup as well. It's pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this light through the relay over to system negative. So the light currently is set up normally. So the positive runs to system positive, the negative runs to system negative. What we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the negative here. We're gonna run a new negative from system negative through the relay over to the light. So when the Pico goes into an alarm condition and it closes that relay, the light's gonna get power and it's gonna turn on. And then when the alarm goes away, the relay is gonna open back up and our light's gonna go off. So it should be a pretty cool little demonstration. Now, if you're interested in your overall power system, not just your monitoring, but things like solar, shore, and alternator power, I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of those three major charging sources, solar, shore, and alternator power, and it talks about how they each have strengths, but they each also have weaknesses as well. But when you bring them together in a holistic power strategy, it's gonna make sure that you have a good charge source no matter where you go out on the road so you can enjoy what you're doing out there and you're not gonna be worried about running out of power. It's also got a discussion on the different battery types that are out there and the strengths and weaknesses of those. That's gonna help you narrow in on that very important decision on which battery is right for you. And then lastly, it has a diagram that is essentially your whole power system on one page. It's got the three major charging sources at the top solar shore and alternator power. And it's gonna show how they make their way through the system, charge up your batteries, and then come out at your end devices, such as your microwave or your laptop. For instance, how does that alternator power make its way through the system and come out and charge your laptop? So it's a really illuminating diagram that I think you'll find useful. To get your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. All right, with that, let's zoom in and we're gonna wire our light through the relay and set up our alarm. Our first step is gonna be to connect somewhere here on system negative. I'm gonna go ahead and connect our wire to this first lug. So here we are at the relay. Hopefully you can read it. It is upside down, but there's not a whole lot going on and I'm gonna explain what each terminal is so the GND is ground. That is where we're going to connect our system negative wire. So that's gonna come in. I've got a little ferrule on the end of, the, end of that wire and uh, we are gonna go ahead and connect it. So that is the connection to system negative and the battery. And then we can send the power out on NC or NO. So NC normally closed, NO normally open. 
we're going to send the wire to our light out of the normally open terminal. So what that means is under normal conditions, the switch is open there and no power will get passed through to turn on our light. So our light will be off under normal conditions and then when it goes into an alarm condition, the relay will switch over and send that power through out of that terminal and our light will come on under an alarm condition. The NC normally closed is the opposite. As it sounds, the switch is normally closed and if we connected our light to that second terminal there, our light would be on all the time until an alarm condition went off and the switch would switch over and our light would go off when there was an alarm condition. So it's either or. Now as far as this last port, COM is common and common is typically where you would bring your line into a relay, uh, kind of like we're doing with the, the ground over here. You would bring your power in on common and you would go out on NO or NC. But uh, as far as I can tell in this particular relay, common is not connected to anything. The big clue for that is the diagram up at the top. You can see just involves these last three terminals. So on all the Seamarine relays, uh, depending on the module you get, the relays are labeled a little bit differently. But uh, I would just follow that diagram up at the top and um, your wire going out is going to be on NC or NO that goes out to your particular device. And then lastly, I want to point out at the top, you can see 1A for 1 amp. So the max current through this relay is 1 amp and the max voltage is 30 volts DC. Uh, if you have more than uh, 1 amp of current for whatever you're running through this relay, you would just use this programmable relay to set off another higher current relay and run your power through that. So I'll show you a couple of those relays that you could use for that a little later in the video. But at this point, let's bring in our other wire that's going to go out to our light. And uh, as I said, that's going to go into the normally open terminal. So that will not send power through until we have an alarm condition. At this point, let's go ahead and make our connection over at the puck light. Here we are at the last connection and as you saw earlier, I broke the negative. If we reconnect that, our light should come on. But um, what we're going to do is leave that negative aside. This is a yellow negative because it's a marine safety duplex cable if you're wondering why that looks a little bit different. But we're going to bring in our negative over here from our relay and go ahead and connect that. And because we are connected to the normally open side of the relay, the light is not going to come on. So now we need to zoom out and set off an alarm condition and our puck light should illuminate. All right, we've got the moment of truth here. I've actually already programmed an alarm into the Pico to go off when our charger turns off over there. So you can see behind me, I have it plugged into the wall. That's representing our grid power and the way that we've set up the alarm is the charger is running through shunt number one on the quadra shunt and I programmed it to where when the current through that shunt drops below a certain threshold, which is two amps in my case, when it drops below two amps, go into alarm. So as long as the charger's plugged in, we're connected to grid power and it's charging up the battery, everything's fine. As soon as the grid power drops out, the alarm goes off, it triggers the relay and whatever's connected to the relay gets power. Now I wanted to mention I did add a little inline fuse to our negative line running up to the relay and uh, that has a one amp fuse in it. It's a five by 20 millimeter fuse. If you want to find out how to add those fuse holders to any positive or negative wire, I did a video on that a few weeks back. Just uh, click on my channel name and you should be able to see all those videos. I've got a lot of useful videos for you. But um, that fuse is going to protect that relay and make sure that we don't send more than one amp of current through it. Now, as I mentioned, you can set off other relays using this relay. So I've got a couple of examples. And uh, this one is a 40 amp relay for, uh, I believe, automotive applications. It's got a 12 volt the voltage is 12 volts, so what that means is the signal voltage to trigger the relay is 12 volts. So we are running a 12 volt system here, and the power that is running through this relay is 12 volts. 
So if we were to put this relay here, we could use this power that's going to our light as just a signal voltage, a 12 volt signal, and it would activate that relay and it would connect its contacts and send up to 40 amps to a motor or a fan, some kind of high current device. Um, I also have a 10 amp version, same deal. It'll only do 10 amps, but uh, it's gonna have a 12 volt signal voltage. So we could just mount it here and wire this relay to that relay. So when this relay connects and sends power through, it would activate this relay. This relay would close its contacts and send power to another device. So those are a couple options. I'll go ahead and set these aside. But without further ado, let's set off our alarm and talk about it. So I'm gonna unplug our charger. So as you saw, it's going into an alarm and it's showing on the screen, the charger is at zero amps. And it has activated our relay and turned on our little puck light. Now to get rid of this alarm, we can hit dismiss and it will shut off our light and it will quit beeping but it will actually stay in the Pico if we look in the menu under alarms, it'll stay there as long as the alarm condition persists. Or we can solve the problem, bring the power grid back in. As soon as current flows through shunt number one here, it's going to shut the alarm off. So let's do that. So our charger turns back on immediately as soon as it goes over two amps through this shunt the alarm goes off. Now that two amp measurement was set by me. So that could have been five amps. It could have been 10 amps. I just picked a number. And as soon as it goes below two, that's me saying that it's the charger has turned off. But uh, that number is completely up to you. And uh, which measurement device is completely up to you. So as you can see in this system now, we're measuring four different currents from four devices over there. The second one was a refrigerator. We're measuring the main battery current as well as the battery state of charge. We're measuring the battery voltage. We've got a temperature sensor down here. So all of these, anything that you're measuring with any of these sensors can be used to set up an alarm. So it's quite extensive. Uh, whether you want to set off if the temperature in your engine bay gets above a certain point and you want to set off a fan or some kind of cooling system, you could do that. Um, it's extremely versatile. And uh, at this point, let's get in and I'll show you actually how to set up one of those alarms in the Pico. Now I did unplug our charger and the alarm went off and I hit dismiss, but I wanted to show you if we hit the circle button here, we'll go into the main menu. You can see that item that says alarms at the top that only shows up if there's an active alarm. So if we go in there, we should see the charger alarm. Current is low on the charger. So that is an active alarm until we fix that situation. Let's go back though, and we're gonna go down to data management. Data management is where we're going to go in and set all of our alarms. And these are all the criteria with which you can set up an alarm. So battery state, remaining time. So if you only had 30 minutes left before your battery was out of power, you could set off an alarm for that. Tank level, we could do low or high tank levels if we had a tank set up. Voltage, if your voltage gets down, this could be your starter battery voltage or your main battery bank voltage. If any of those hit a low or high point, let's see. So the Pico has an internal voltmeter, but we could go to our shunt has a uh, voltmeter on it. And uh, we could set a low voltage or high voltage alarm to go off on that. Let me go back out to current. Current is where we're going to look at the alarm that's already been set up with our charger, but let's look at the rest of these barometric trend or temperature. So any of these parameters can be used to set up an alarm in the Pico. Let's dive into current and I'll show you what I set up here. So when you select current, it's going to pull up all of your current sensors. So we have our main shunt, our 500 amp shunt on the main battery. 
and then we have the quadra shunt showing up here. It's a little bit confusing because I renamed each shunt in the last video as the item that's running through it. So number one is charger, shunt number two is fridge, shunt three is pump, and shunt four is light. So if I had not renamed those, they would show up with a serial number and a part number like that SC503. But let's go into charger and alarm low is the alarm that I've set up. So you can see alarm state is on. So by default, this will say off. You just need to turn it on to say, yes, I want to use this alarm. Alarm value, I set that at two amps. So that's the, the threshold at which if it goes below that, the alarm goes off. Now, if this was an alarm high programming, that would be the value at which if it went above two amps, it would go off. So whether you're on low or high, you're going to set a value. And if it goes below or above that value, it's going to go off into an alarm. Now silent is off. That is basically silent mode. So if you want it to set off the relay or flash at you on the screen, but you don't want it to beep like you heard earlier, that very annoying beep, you can put silent mode on. So it'll still go into alarm, it just won't beep. So I turned that off because I wanted it to beep at us. We can set a delay. How long do you want the condition to exist before the alarm goes off? The alarm duration is how long will the alarm continue to beep and the alarm condition to stay before it uh, expires. The output, this is the output relay on the quadra shunt. So SCQ50 is the quadra shunt model number. 6356 is part of the serial number for that particular quadra shunt. That way, if you have multiple quadra shunts, you can grab the serial number and you'll know which one you're selecting. So the output relay is on the quadra shunt. Now, if we had one of the other modules from Seamarine, we would select that module. And you can see the quadra shunt is the only one with a little alarm relay on it. But if we had multiple modules plugged in that had relays, all those relays would show up in this list. So we've selected the one that's available in this system. And the output mode is on off. Let me show you. So on off means the relay goes on when the alarm is set off. And then when the alarm goes away, the relay goes back off. So basically what that translates to in our situation is the puck light that I wired in there. The light goes on when the alarm is, is under alarm. And when the alarm goes away, the light goes back off. You could also set it where when the alarm goes off, that item just goes on. And as far as I can tell, it just stays on. Or when the alarm goes off, you can have it go off have the relay go off and stay off. So perhaps that item would stay on or stay off until another alarm went off. So maybe you could start to have multiple alarms. Maybe your tank level gets low and once that alarm goes off, then the pump stays on until the pump, another alarm goes off that your tank is too high and that kills the pump power. So. You can do all sorts of, of uh, things here, but I wanted our little puck light to just go on and off with the alarm, so I chose on off. I'm gonna press the circle button to confirm. And those are all the parameters to set up an alarm. As I said before, you have quite a few different parameters under which you can set up an alarm. So it's very versatile, and uh, there's pretty much an unlimited number of things that you can do with alarms on the Pico. That's my video on the Seamarine Pico and how to program those automated relays. Hopefully that was helpful. As you can tell, there's quite a bit of automation that you could introduce into your power system with this particular function. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. And if you want more help with your power system, be sure to grab a copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.